Hello. Hello. Happy Friday. Welcome to The Distance, Atlanta Track Club of Resources to support us in staying healthy and active while we continue to navigate these challenging and uncertain times. My name is Alyssa Palladino. I am a registered dietitian and a runner based here in Atlanta. And I am coming to you live once again this Friday from my kitchen for your weekly nutrition lunch and learn. And we've been discussing a whole range of nutrition topics here that are relevant to you as runners and walkers and active people with the understanding that our food choices play a powerful role, not only in our overall health and our performance, but in um, our mood, our energy levels, our sleep, and so much more. So with that in mind, we are going to jump into today's topic, which is how to build a salad that is actually satisfying. So salads are often a go-to meal when we are trying to eat more healthfully um, and with good reason, but whether our salads actually are so um, healthy for us really comes down to how we build them. Uh, so what's actually in our salads. And two common salad pitfalls that I often see are either your skimpy salad, so maybe just lettuce and veggies, um, which is really unsatisfying both from a physical standpoint, but also from a pleasure, a pleasure standpoint. Um, and you're likely to feel hungry pretty much immediately after eating that skimpy salad. Uh, or on the flip side, we may load up our salad with topics and dressing uh, to the point where we are unintentionally uh, working against our healthy eating goals, which may have been why we chose to eat the salad in the first place. So there is a happy medium instead of our skimpy salad or what I sometimes refer to as salad sabotage. There is um, a middle ground and I'm going to share with you today a simple template that you can customize and that will empower you to turn your salad into a balanced, energizing, and flavorful meal. And then I'm going to demo three different simple salad recipes that feature different flavor profiles from different cuisine types. So we're gonna do a Greek-inspired salad, an Asian-inspired salad, and a Mexican inspired salad. And these are all recipes that I make all the time. They're kind of in heavy rotation for me right now, especially in the summer when it's hotter out and a nice cold salad sounds more appetizing sometimes than turning on our stove or our, or our oven. So if that's you and you find yourself craving salads this summer, but you're looking to, to make them a bit more enjoyable and more energizing than Stay, stay tuned. Hang on. We'll get into it. All right. So your template for creating a satisfying salad. There are four steps or four components. The first is going to be your greens or your vegetables. So you want to start with a bed of greens, whether that's romaine, whether that's uh, spinach, arugula, um, it can either even be some sort of cabbage slaw, it can even be iceberg. And then you want to add really as many different colorful, raw, or cooked vegetables as you want. So the more the better, really. Um, your veggies are where you're going to get your, your fiber, your dietary fiber, which helps with healthy cholesterol and blood sugar levels um, and helps you feel fuller longer. Um, your veggies are going to give you those antioxidants, those vitamins, and those minerals. Um, and the more color, the better. So throw in some raw veggies throw in some leftover roasted or sauteed veggies for some, some different flavors there. Um, but you definitely want to have greens and veggies as your first component. That seems kind of obvious for your salad, right? Okay. Your second component, so the second step is going to be your protein source. So those of you who have tuned in from week to week know that having protein as part of a meal or a snack is really essential um, it takes longer to digest, so it keeps us feeling satisfied for longer. It helps manage hunger, and of course, it also supports um, our muscles. So it supports recovery after exercise and with our lean muscle mass, which then in turn supports metabolism. So you want to make sure your salad has a protein source. So that can be 
Um, one of my favorites go-tos would be your grilled chicken. If you have a rotisserie chicken, you can pull some of the meat off of that and throw it in your salad. You can also do some sort of canned tuna or um, pouch tuna um, or salmon. You can do tofu for a plant-based option. You can do hard-boiled eggs, really good protein source. You can throw on some deli meat, turkey, ham. Um, so you want to make sure you have protein. The exact amount is going to depend on you know, a number of factors, age, body size, activity level, all that. But I would say most athletes want to aim for at least if you're doing an animal protein, three to four ounces, which is about the size of your palm. Okay. So we've got veggies, we've got protein. The third component or third step to building your satisfying salad is going to be fat. So some good old fat um, is going to help with satiety. So helping us feel fuller longer. Um, it's also going to add a lot of flavor, of course, to the salad and make it more enjoyable. And it's going to help with the absorption of some of the nutrients, the fat soluble nutrients that are found in our vegetables. So vitamins A, D, E, and K are all fat soluble and will be absorbed better when paired with the fat source. So what does it actually mean when it comes to a salad? Well, there are a lot of really easy ways to add fat to a salad. And actually, sometimes the the issue is that we overdo it and we add too many different sources. So nuts and seeds um, are definitely a great source there. So if you're throwing on almonds or pumpkin seeds or pistachios or walnuts or pecans, um, peanuts, chia seeds, whatever it is, uh, those are those are a great way to add fat. Um, avocado and guacamole. So those are also really common, popular, delicious ways to add um, healthy fat to a salad cheese so you know whether you're doing feta or goat cheese or parmesan which is one of my favorites for salads um or mozzarella or any kind of shredded cheese that's going to add yes some protein but also some fat um and then our um olives so a lot of times we have olives on a salad that'll be another fat source and then finally our salad dressings so an olive oil based vinaigrette or salad dressing is going to mean um more heart healthy monounsaturated fat. Um, and then of course, we sometimes have dressings that are more of like a cream base. So maybe like a ranch or a Caesar, which is gonna still be a fat source. It's just gonna be more of that saturated fat, which isn't quite as good um, for our hearts. And actually if we overdo it, can raise our LDL cholesterol. So um, we wanna have one or two or three different fat sources in our salad, um, but be mindful that, you know, they add up. So, so kind of the looking at looking at the portions there. Okay, so we've got veggies, protein, fat. Fourth component to rounding out our salad and making sure it is balanced and satisfying is carbohydrates. So, of course, carbohydrates are our preferred energy source, and that is not just true for our muscles during exercise. It's also true for our brains, and really all the cells in our bodies require carbohydrates to function optimally. So we do want to make sure that we include a carbohydrate source in our salads. Um, and if we don't, what tends to happen is our bodies are smart. So especially as athletes, um, our bodies are craving those carbs. So if we skip it in our salad, we tend to find ourselves going for a carb-rich snack afterwards. Um, and so maybe that's going to be cookies or potato chips or something that isn't as nutritious of a carbohydrate as the type that we may have included in our salad. So that's kind of an example. Another example of salad sabotage where we're making an effort to do what we think is healthy, but it ends up kind of working against us in sort of the greater nutrition picture. So there are some really great, um, delicious ways to add carbs to our salads. Two of my favorites would be um, beans and chickpeas, because as I've talked about in the past, beans and chickpeas, and this is true for lentils as well, are really great sources of complex carbs. They're also really high in dietary fiber, and they provide plant-based protein. So they're really a nu they're nutritional powerhouses. They're really inexpensive. They're versatile. They're shelf-stable. So um, those are, so the, the chickpeas, the beans, and the lentils are Definitely great carbs to add to a salad. 
Um, quinoa, farro, bulgur, barley, any kind of grain is great too. Corn, um, excellent depending on what flavor profile you've got going on with your salad. You can even add um, some sort of fruit. So apples, clementine segments, pears, blueberries, strawberries, peaches. Um, fruit is a carbohydrate and a great way to kind of boost the energy of your salad. So there you go. Veggies, protein, fat, carbs. Four components, four steps to turn that salad from either something that's skimpy and unsatisfying or your salad sabotage instead into a balanced meal. So I hope that for anyone who's about to eat a salad for lunch, maybe you've noticed that there's a missing component or you're doubling up on one. Um, and so you can kind of reevaluate, fill in the gaps um, and, and have some new ideas to inspire you. And again, that template is totally customizable. So depending on your dietary preferences, what you happen to have, um, you can play around with the, that template. Um, but if you're going to a restaurant, you're ordering a salad out, keep those four, um, those four items in mind. And so that can help you navigate the, the restaurant menu. Or if it's a bill of your own salad, salad place, you can figure out what you want to add to make sure that you are satisfied. All right. So, okay, we'll jump right in now to the demos. And like I said, these are salads that I make all the time for myself. So I hope that you enjoy them too. The first one we're going to do is going to be a Greek inspired salad. And the base for this one, um, you can use romaine or iceberg lettuce, which I do sometimes do. But often, because it's so veggie heavy, I actually just skip the lettuce and I go right ahead with the veggies. So that's totally up to you, depending on how much volume you want in that meal. Um, really, when it comes to, to veggies and salad, you don't have to worry too much about portions. It's kind of like the more the better. Um, so these are just chopped cucumbers. That's going to be the base. And cucumbers are a really awesome uh, vegetable. They're in season right now. And they're really high in water. They're like over 90% water. So this is a great way to add to your hydration and meet your fluid needs with what you're eating, which we all know in this heat, hydration is really important. So cucumbers. The next step is going to be bell peppers. Uh, you could use red, yellow, or orange. I just wouldn't use green because they're just less sweet. If you like green peppers, you're welcome to use them. Um, they're, it's also not as colorful, and so it's nice to have a colorful salad, which is visually appealing, too. Um, the next step is going to be tomatoes. So I just have these baby tomatoes. Here are cherry tomatoes that I sliced in half. You don't have to. There we go. It's so very colorful there so far. So that's going to be our veggie base. Um, oh, and I should mention red, red onion. To use... I'm a big, I'm heavy handed with my red onion, but you can use as little or as much as you want there. So that's your veggie base, nice and colorful. All right, so our next step is going to be, um, I'm gonna add some fat and some flavor here. So because this is a Greek style salad, I'm using feta cheese and black olives. Um, both are fat sources. The feta cheese also adds protein. So about five grams of protein per quarter cup. And it's a really good source, like most dairy, of calcium. So that's important for our bones. So olives, feta. There you go. Um, if you want a side salad at some at some junction in your life, this is on. It's just like this, a nice uh, Greek style side salad. But again, if we're trying to make this into a balanced meal, we've got to now add protein and carbs. So. One way we can do that and actually hit both the protein and the carbs at once is with our chickpeas. So if you want to keep this totally plant-based, well, there's already feta in there, but if you don't want to add an animal protein, you can use a full cup of chickpeas and bump up that feta to about a half a cup. And between the chickpeas and the feta and the little bit of protein that you have in the vegetables, you're going to actually get a solid 25 grams of protein for that salad, which 
is an ample amount for most people in a meal and kind of a nice minimum amount of protein to target for an athlete. So you do not have to add an animal protein as long as you bump up the feta and you use about a cup of these chickpeas um, because they've got about six grams of protein per half cup. The chickpeas can also count as your carbohydrate. Um, so yeah, the beans and the legumes typically can double count. You're also welcome to add grilled chicken to that um, Greek style salad to bump up the protein even more, kind of depending on your how heavy your training is that day, how hungry you are, what kind of dietary pattern you prefer to, to follow. And then again, if it's a heavy training day and you think you're going to need some more energy, I would like to have on the side of that Greek salad, either some kind of whole wheat pita or whole wheat pita chips. Um, sometimes they even break up the uh, pita chips and kind of crumble them on top of the, um, the Greek style salad, which is kind of a nice crunch there. And then another alternative for your chickpeas is to do roasted chickpeas. So same carbs, same protein. If you roast them in the oven with a little bit of olive oil or you buy them roasted, then you get a nice crunch. And that can be just a nice change of pace for someone who doesn't necessarily like the sliminess of the chickpeas, which I have to be honest, they're, that's kind of my, my thing. I much prefer them crispy and roasted. And then finally, for the Greek style salad, um, we'll talk about dressing here. Sometimes I don't do a dressing at all with that salad because between the the um i do a lot of salt and pepper um the feta the olives and the um red onion if you mix it all together you don't necessarily i don't usually miss the dressing but you know that's sort of just a personal thing for someone who likes a little bit dressed i would recommend either olive oil and lemon so basically your healthy fat and your acid which are sort of the building blocks of any vinaigrette or any dressing Another alternative, which I'm really into these days, is tzatziki. So kind of going along with that Greek-style theme, um, tzatziki is a Greek yogurt-based dip. Um, it's got some cucumber. It's got some different flavors in there, and it's really delicious. So you can add that to your Greek salad in sort of the place of dressing. All right. So, so that's, salad, that's salad number one. Your Greek style salad, very colorful and featuring a lot of produce that is in season right now. Um, our next one is going to be a um, Asian inspired slaw. Um, and I'm gonna actually demo uh, really easy, I promise, dressing that you can make on your own to kind of complement that. So we're gonna start with, this is broccoli slaw. But you can um, definitely use cabbage slaw um, or really even like shredded lettuce if, if this is hard to find, though it is just right in the uh, produce section um, at Kroger or Publix or wherever you shop, Trader Joe's, same thing. So we're starting with a base of slaw, and that's, you know, part of our veggies. Then we're going to add some matchstick carrots. Sometimes I'll do um, chopped bell peppers here instead. But today we're doing we're doing the carrots. So really, here we're getting just lots of vitamin C, lots of vitamin A, beta carotene, um, and a lot of important nutrients in our colorful veggies here. And no real amounts. Handful of this, handful of that. You're you're good when it comes to the veggies. You really don't need to to measure them out. All right. So like with our Greek salad, like I said, I'm pretty heavy handed with my red onion. So we're going to do some chopped red onion into our slaw and in general uh onions and garlic are great ways to add flavor to not only salad but just meals in general um so that we can cut down on other ways to add flavor that may not be so good for us um such as like salt and fat and things like that so really using those aromatics can be very beneficial plus they tend to have other compounds that are beneficial for our health as far as like our cholesterol and our blood pressure and cancer prevention. So um, if you like onions and garlic, definitely use them heavy handed and don't worry about it or actually feel good about it. All right. So slaw, we are continuing with another um, kind of onion. These are sh uh, shallots or green onions or no, not shallots. That's wrong. Green onions. Um, 
Yeah, green onions. Shallots are different. They also add a lot of flavor. I use them in salad dressing sometimes, but not, not the same thing here. Scallions. That's what I'm thinking of. Green onions are sometimes called scallions. So we've got green onions, scallions, red, red onions, matched carrots, and our broccoli slaw so far. All right. Now we're going to add, this is it's cilantro. People have a love-hate relationship with cilantro for a real reason. So there's a genetic, um, not mutation, but a genetic thing that makes some people taste cilantro like soap. So that's real. If you are that kind of person, skip the cilantro or sub it for parsley. But I'm going to add cilantro here. Just kind of a nice handful. There you go. It adds a lot of flavor and some more greens. I'm going to add some chopped cucumber here. So, again, this is a very veggie heavy base for our slaw so far. Let's see what else we need. Okay. So, for our fat in this recipe, some of it's going to come in the dressing. And then today I'm going to add sesame seeds. Um, you can also add peanuts. Peanuts on this, especially roasted peanuts, are delicious. Actually, cashews and almonds are nice too. But the sesame seeds, you can add both. That's fine too. All right. For our protein, I'm going to actually add this nice grilled chicken here. But if you are wanting something different, something plant-based, this is really good with cubed tofu, either raw or sautéed. Um, that would definitely fit the flavor profile and go well. And then we're going to actually make our own very simple dressing. This is um, another place where we're going to get some fat. So the base of the dressing is our favorite peanut butter. And we're going to mix it in this little mason jar, which is one of my favorite tools for making salad dressings. So we've got the, the peanut butter, so that's a good source of healthy fat. It's contributing to um, the fat in our in our meal. We're gonna add we're gonna add some maple syrup. I know it sounds weird so far, peanut butter and maple syrup, but I promise you, it, it's all gonna make sense. Then we're going to add some soy sauce. So now you're getting it's kind of all coming together, peanut. Soy, a little bit of sweetness. And I'm using a low-sodium soy sauce here. Even low-sodium soy sauce is very high in sodium, which, like we've talked about in the past, if you have high blood pressure, you want to monitor your sodium intake. But if you are a runner or a cyclist or an athlete, losing a lot of sodium and sweat, it's actually a good thing to up your sodium intake through foods. Um, and I sometimes will add some rice wine vinegar here or um, some sriracha. Sriracha, if you like it spicy, add it just for a little kick. There we go. And then you can add lime too. Pour it on. There we go. And then for your carb um, with this, you've got a lot of different options here. So... Often I'll do um, quinoa in, in this kind of slaw. It's great with brown rice. You can add if you have buckwheat noodles or soba, no soba noodles, you can add that. Um, but yeah, you definitely want to make sure you add some kind of grain or carbohydrate to your slaw. Mix it all together. Oh, what I would normally do is put the top on this Tupperware and shake it. But it doesn't, there you go. It doesn't look all that beautiful, but I promise you it tastes really good. Okay. So we've got one more salad that I'm going to demo. And so we've got, we did our Greek style or Asian style. Um, and now we're going to do our Mexican inspired salad. Um, and this is another one that I'll show you it, a plant-based version, and then if you want to add chicken or shrimp or beef or ground turkey, you definitely can. I'll have my gradient sort of in the back there, so hold on one sec. Okay. 
Okay, thank you. Now I've got everything closer at hand. So with this one, we are going to start with the base of romaine. Iceberg is honestly really great too. Here I've even done it with spinach. The base of romaine, so that hits number one, which is our veggies. And now we're going to add some more veggies. So we're going to do chopped peppers, chopped tomatoes. And once again, chopped red onion. If you wanted to do um, sauteed onion here, actually, that would be pretty delicious. Also, a little deconstructed burrito. Now, for our carbs, we're going to have two different sources here. We're going to have corn, and we're going to have black beans. And the reason there's such a large portion of black beans here is because they're double counting. They're boosting our carbs along with our corn, and then they're also giving us some protein. Um, because we're not adding an animal protein to this salad, we do want a larger portion of black beans to make sure we're getting the protein that we actually need to be satisfied, to manage our hunger, and to support our muscles. So corn, there we go, and black beans. And finally, we're going to add, not finally, one, so that's our, our carbs and our protein. So we've got veggies, carb, protein. We're going to add a fat now. Um, well, I'll give you some options for adding a fat. What most people are going to want to do would be some avocado or some guacamole. Um, I like these cute little guacamoles. I often recommend them. Um, I'm not a huge guac fan, so I'm not going to put that on there right now. But um, I would say cheese is another great option to add fat to a, um, a Mexican style salad. You can also do some sort of um, sour cream or some combination of guac, sour cream, and cheese. If you, you know, um, honestly, for me, I'll sometimes do like an olive oil and lime based dressing on something like this, and more cilantro. So again, if you're a soap taster. You can skip this. I'm going to add it. Okay. And then whenever you're doing anything Mexican, if you want to add more like salsa or pico, you definitely can. That's kind of been bumping up not only the flavor, but the veg vegetables. Add a little bit of lime here. Oops, there you go. So you've got Plenty of colorful vegetables. You've got corn and beans for carbs and protein. And then you can choose, pick your own fat. So cheese, guac, avocado, sour cream, or some olive oil dressing or some combination. And again, that is plant-based with a cup of beans and some cheese and some some of the protein that's in the vegetables, you actually have enough, but you definitely can add um, some grilled chicken or some shrimp or some beef or some turkey to that and um, be even more satisfied. So hopefully those of you who um, are into salads have learned something today and will either add or subtract um, something from your, from your, your salad knowing what you know now, and it will be even more satisfying than it was before. Um, maybe you'll give one of these specific recipe or flavor combinations a try. As always, they're totally customizable. You're not actually cooking anything. So if you mess up and you leave something out um, or you use more or less of something, it's still not going to make or break how it comes out. Yeah, I think salads, especially in the summer, are a great template for um, a balanced, energizing, and flavorful meal. And now you know how to build it so that it is. Um, thank you for tuning in. We are really just at the end of our time. If anyone watching live wants to chime in or ask a question, I'm happy to try to address it um, in the time remaining. But otherwise, I hope you all have a great weekend. Enjoy your lunch, and I look forward to seeing you again next Friday.